Hey guys, it's Corbett with the Building Performance Workshop. I'm in an attic right now of a office building, which is actually a house. It just looks like it's an office building and that's what it's used for, but it was originally intended to be a house. And what happened recently is that a giant commercial HVAC firm came in, and this is a company that many people have heard of uh, nationwide. They normally do airports and giant buildings, and they came in and did uh, this to a, a house. First off, we have two giant systems in the attic with almost no insulation in the floor. And this is a classic problem that we see in HVAC. All attention paid to the machines, no attention paid to the enclosure. Um, so the reason you need heating and cooling is because of that. If that was better, you would need a lot less. Also, hear that sound? That sound is the blower fighting against pressures as it's trying to work really hard, but it pushes and then it figures out that it's pushing too hard, push pulls back a little bit. So it ends up with this ah, 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 ah. Part of the reason is that they figured out this was too big, too much equipment. So what they did is just rip open this supply duct, put in a block so that none of the air that the system produces can go that way, and then they inserted in the filter slot another block so that this equipment is essentially totally defunct now. And they just piped from this machine new ductwork, which is sort of insulated and sort of not. This is obviously a problem. Ducted over the ceiling and into this ductwork. So this is coming from this machine all the way across the aisle and going into the ductwork, which if there was a duct design in the first place, this completely defeats it. Uh, so overall, this is pretty awful, and this is a pretty well-known company. Um, and I am, <laughs> I'm not gonna make a big deal about who they are right now, uh, but maybe when the TV show comes out, we'll talk more about this. Also, if you open up the filter slot, this is what you see. This is a wide media slot, which is meant for a filter that's this wide that gives you a lot more surface area, so it decreases the pressure. And what they put in here is a ridiculous little flimsy thing that is totally bent out of shape because of the suction that's induced on it. More investigation shows that number one, we've got a pressure inside the blower cabinet of negative 0.8. When we go to the filter, Right before the filter, we've got 0.55, which is pretty high for before the filter. After the filter, 0.15, and this is negative because we're on the return side, but when we go to the supply side, here's the blower cabinet. I'm going in right when the ductwork starts, right here, and you can see that the number is negative. Super confusing. Uh, so I go further down the line, and I find out that it gets more positive as we go. This was interesting. I had to call Brian Orr, who's a HVAC uh, mastermind, friend of mine, and he uh, runs HVAC School podcast, by the way, which you should check out if you don't already know it, explained that probably this was a dampered system, meaning it was supposed to be zoned, but of course, when this guy put the two systems together, the damper was left open. So the, ba the uh, bypass damper is feeding air from the supply back into the return and also the bypass damper on this system is probably wide open too. So both of these sides of ductwork are probably both return and s supply somehow. So essentially what we found out today is a lot more testing is required in order to figure out what the heck is going on here. Um, what I'm about to do next is do some flows on the supply registers and on the returns just to find out if there's any pattern at all. Um, but uh, this is turning into a more and more complicated job. Maybe you'll hear more about it. Anyway, this could be your mother's house, it could be your grandmother's house, it could be the office that you work in. And the point is that just because a company charges you a bunch of money or donates their services, either way, does not mean that they actually know what they're doing. Uh, especially if you have heard of them and you are inclined to think, oh, you must know what you're doing, I've heard of you. Always get test data and always get pictures of what's going on up here and always have people describe to you what it is that they're actually doing because if they're not doing anything up in your attic or if they're doing crazy stuff, you should know and you should not have to pay for that. Tune in next time.